Hello, good afternoon. Welcome back to day number 26 of the semester. This is week number 13. In other words, next week is the last week of the semester. Two more days to go. Since we do not have classes on the first day, so we do not have mega classes on December the 1st. In other words, you just have, it, including this class, three classes to go. All right? So if you have signed up for your speech of the semester, it's going to be today, next Tuesday, and next Friday. All right? So it's going to be exciting. But what is much more exciting for us instructor this semester is, starting from this semester, we do not have any more course evaluation because that is the bygone day. But we do have something new that is called student feedback questionnaire. That's exactly what I have been doing in every semester of my G courses. Remember the learning contract one questionnaire, remember the learning contract two or three questionnaire, and remember the mid-semester, or what we call the midterm course survey. And today, I'm going to give you the end of the semester course survey. All right? The end of semester course survey. It's an internal survey done by me as an instructor to gauge the response of my student after the whole semesters of learning or heavy workload. I'm sorry, a little bit more work to do. But the thing that is interesting this semester is not only I designed my own end of the semester course survey, but starting from this semester, because of the seniors management's new ideas, uh, they have actually given us a very good questionnaire. And this is going to be the SFQ. They call it Student Feedback Questionnaire. And it's excellent, so I use the Student Feedback Questionnaire here as my end of semester course survey. Now, one thing that is much more interesting that I do not know if you already received message, and that is something very good. In the past, when the course evaluation is done, it is done by someone else, bringing in some paper in the class, not only towards the end of semester, and we need to walk away from, from the classroom. Now, the student management say, no, you are the teacher of that class. You must ensure that your student will fill up the SFQ. And it is highly recommended we have to administer the SFQ at the very last class of the semester. In other words, next Friday is the day when you have to do the official SFQ through your student web link, not through this link I'm getting. So I think it's perfect because this is the week when I would invite you to do this end of the semester course survey in this class and I can report back to you the result next Tuesday of what the whole consensus of the students become, or better say the feedback, so may I invite you, each one of you, okay? May I invite each one of you now, take five to 10 minutes to finish this end of semester course survey now, okay? May I invite each one of you to take five to 10 minutes now to get into the end of the semester course survey. Complete it, it's just 26 questions. Very concise, very good from my point of view. And then after that, we'll get back to the team-based presentations and also we'll get back to the speeches of the semester. So may I invite you to do it now? This is on the right-hand side of your Moodle side. The first name under upcoming events or the first block, the last link at the very first block of our Moodle environment. Please make sure you spend time doing it now. Five to ten minutes, all right? Everybody. And after that, we will come back to the team-based presentations, which I got my cheat sheets today, and I know who, who is going to be the team who is going to do it today. All right? So, um, you want to volunteer? It's your team, right? And then one more team. Is it um, Sophie? Is it your team today, Sophie? Yeah. Your team today, right? Okay, that's very good. Two team-based presentations, and we have two speeches of the semester. Very good. I, I think we'll get started at uh, 1.25, okay? Same time. 
So yeah, the fifth one. You're the fifth one, yeah, right? So we should be. Are you? Oh, we should be the same. Today? Okay. We're trying to see if time is enough. Because last time you see it because the time congested pushes it back at least one team as of last time. So we need to accommodate this kind of uh, idiosyncrasy. So we have to do it this way. But I think it's okay. We have time to do it. Okay, please make sure you spend five to ten minutes to complete the end of the semester questionnaire. We're going to start our class at 1.25, okay? We still have about nine to ten minutes time, okay? Yes, use the computer to do it. Welcome. I can check that two microphones are working today, so it's very good.
During this period of time, the same as the time for which the end applies. Alright, so Takashi, thank you. Johnson, not here yet. Zero, not here yet, right? Okay, Austin, thank you. Knight, welcome back. Edward, welcome back. Edward, welcome back. German, welcome back. Karina, welcome back. And then, uh, in this, thank you. We have the Kelvin, yes. Harvey, thank you. The Dorothy, thank you. Expresso, thank you. To Vera, thank you. Sam, not here yet. Okay. Um, Sam, not here yet. Ian, yes. Julia, not here yet. Benjamin, not here yet. Kiwi, thank you. Sophie, thank you. Maggie, thank you. Oscar, thank you. Billy, thank you. Now, Sunny, thank you. Mabel, thank you. Stanley, thank you. Haley, not yet. Iris Newell, not here yet. Iris Lowe, thank you. Jackie, Thank you. Joe, thank you. Delvado, thank you. Gideon, thank you. So these two thank you. Thank you. So time that's almost up, one minute left. Have you finished? Have you finished with the end of semester survey yet? Do you need a few more minutes? You need a few more minutes. Okay, thank you. So let let's give you five more minutes. So we start we start at one thirty in that case. Time is a precious resource. We need to make the best of it.
Presentations for learning contract number three. Hello, we are team number three. And I'm Stanley. I'm the leader. I see it's Dorothy. And I'm Jackie. And Joe. Welcome. And our team topic is about computer farm and this is our team member list. Yeah, so uh, what is about computer farm? So there has been photo. It's about something about identity or about the hacker, how they uh, tip something and about uh, fraud. Yeah, and it's also about uh, some cyber uh, spyware and technology. Touching is uh, something like uh, when you download something, uh, it will also install some unexpected software, something like that. And here is a vi video about the uh, wiretapping and cyber warfare. And this is about uh, someone who uh, hacked in your home and listen what you say. And the following one is about uh, the war between two countries and mostly is involved about the uh, level king attack. So uh, let's move on to the video. <laughs> Hello there, brain stuff. I'm Jonathan Strickland, and I'll be listening in on your private conversations today. What's that? Privacy? <laughs> You're so cute. But I'll tell you what. How about I teach you how to listen in, too? Without getting into all the legality, history, or ethics of it, let's take a look at how wiretapping works. Now, there's many ways to tap into a phone call. I'd be remiss if I didn't at least acknowledge that a multi-million dollar market exists where governments pay phone companies to patch them in and record your calls, or that it's also possible to hack into satellites that transmit phone signals. But since we've only got limited time, let's talk about what's called the roving bug method of wiretapping a mobile call. The FBI and other intelligence agencies have made use of this technique by remotely activating a handset's microphone so they can eavesdrop on any conversation nearby, sometimes whether your phone is powered on or not. All it requires is a bit of software downloaded to the device that modifies the interface displaying when a call is in progress. This spyware then places a call to the eavesdropper, activating the microphone without the owner ever even knowing. The only practical way to avoid this is to routinely peel the battery out of your phone. Or you could buy a continuing supply of cheap prepaid burner phones. Have you seen the wire? Oh, but you want to know how to tap a phone the old-fashioned way by bugging a landline. Well, the earliest versions of this were simply extra wires connected to the line between your phone and the telephone company. The line circuit carries your conversation as electrical current fluctuations, representing the air pressure of sound waves. Wiretaps convert the electrical information on the line back into sound that can be listened to or recorded. You can even use a bug that transmits the audio information as radio waves to a nearby receiver. 
You know, the standard agent parked in a van listening to headphones routine. As with any circuit, you can hook up components anywhere along the line. It's like adding an extra phone jack in your house. The easiest way is to attach another phone somewhere along that line. You do this by cutting one of the modular plugs off of a phone cord so its red and green wires are exposed. Next, you attach the exposed wires to their corresponding colors at an accessible point on the outside line. This can be anywhere along the entire length of wire, even on a clip at a junction box. Once it's attached, just plug the cord into your phone tap and start listening. But a few tips before you start wiretapping. First of all, it's, you know, illegal. Second, disable the tap's microphone so the subject won't hear you breathing on the other end. And so you don't have to wait around for someone to pick up the phone. You can use a voice-activated recorder for dictation to capture when they start talking. When the line goes dead, it'll just turn itself off. So, now that you know how to tap a phone line, what do you... Uh, so we introduced some basic concept uh, about wire tapping and also uh, he talked about some uh, situations in our home yeah, so it's uh, very common but it's not related to the uh, government uh, for this topic it can uh, be basic Okay, you just need to tap the next one. The next one. Because you happen to close. Yeah, 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 yeah I can see it. <laughs> close. Sorry. It's all right. It's, uh, it's all right. Can do something uh, illegally. 
So uh, there has a uh, six type of computer farms. Uh, yeah, you can see that. And the first question uh, is about which computer farm that you think is the most used and can be deteriorating. Deteriorating, uh, it will be more com uh, uh, it will become more serious and uh, more dangerous. So probably we will uh, go through and explain per on topic. Thank you, Stanley. And now I'm going to talk about my observations. Nowadays, internet is a uh, great and common place for communicating and doing anything, whatever. It is a very convenient way to group people together, but it also has its dark side. Every year, billions of burns are made in a number of different cyber crimes. Some People may just be stolen the game's account and some may involve in a huge sum. It shows that the computer, computer crimes separate the separate into different degrees. In fact, everyone is very easy to become one of the victims. Although you think that you are very smart and you will never be one of the stupid victims, internet is full of trust that people may fall into it very easily. That's why many computer crimes happen. Computer crimes are malware, identity theft, service token, sperm, and sperm and child pornography. And my interpretation is: computer crime is any crime that involves a computer and a network. The computer may have been used in the commission of a crime, or it may be the target. These crimes are committed by a select group of criminals, online crimes using the computer as a tool. These crimes require the technical knowledge of the perpetrators. When the individual is the main target of some crime, the computer can be considered as the tool rather than the target. These crimes generally involve less technical expertise. Human weaknesses are generally exposed. There are numerous crimes of this nature committed daily on the internet. Although there are many types of computer crimes and they are separated into different degrees, my opinion is that the order of the computer crimes that most serious computer crimes is silent talking. Identity Information asking you to update your personal information. Um, my topic 
is taught among the wire tapping. And then wire tapping is the people use some software to record the video. For example, uh, if, our, if our group have the conversation and then and then other people use the software to record the conversation and the server has is not permitted. This is the way. And then he is uh, he has the famous news about the white happened. And I think many people they know about the Snowden case. And then ever since Snowden in in fact the PRISM programs in Hong Kong. Um, I think he is a very uh, important thing to ask the people. And the, the, the PLSM is the plans uh, and then the, the government, the US government, uh, to collect the information from the US citizens, so, such as the emails and emails and the message and then the things and then and then mm, the US government will also will also group and, and then the Yahoo and the and the Microsoft is also related in this in these plans. And then the US government is also to 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 plan a penalty if the Microsoft or Yahoo can is not follow the US government, they will have the penalty. Um, and then Snowden refused these programs. And I think it is to make the US, USA people to know their privacy, their privacy, and then and then the personal information is is known by government. And then he, he will have the questions in this in this plan and then the and then uh, I I think that you the Snowdens in review this program so the US government wanted him and, and the US government and the UK government is also wanted him wanted him and then and should should Snowdens have the judgment after he reviewed this plan? I think the people will have the different opinion because uh, and it is also a uh, uh, large case uh, related by the government and then um, in my in my in relation, I think the best method to prevent the white happen is don't use the social social software to talk about related your privacy information, and and then and then we cannot to record any things, and if the people will not forget you. And so if I use the WeChat or, or Skype, this social communication software, I will not, I will I never talk about related my privacy information and because I think this information is is very important to protect to protect you and then uh, and then in, you you will not talk about related your privacy information in the in the social communication software. Right. <coughs> um, this is my turn now. Um, the first question: How does does it exist some law or confusion for protecting the user? In order to make it become equality, um, conviction on cyber crimes developed in the second chapter from the second to the tenth 
article of the nine categories countries list to list the internet to criminal law and for criminal as as described in the following. Um, first, in illegal access. Uh, second, illegal interception. Third, data interference. Fourth, system inter interference. Five, misuse of of device. Six, computer related forgery. Seven, computer related fraud. Eight. Offenses related to child pornography. Nine offenses related to infringement of copyright and related rights. And why the conviction law is assist and why they have computer crime law? And because it is to assist to protect to protect the user and punish the offenders. And this is my interpretation. And um, computer crimes conventions have different types, um, such as hacking, bullying, cracking, etc. So they also have four ads for the computer crimes convention. Um, first, computer fraud, fraud and ops and obvious ad. Electronic Communication Privacy Act, Cyber Security Enhancement Act, Digital Millennium Copyright Act. And then I have a case about computer related fraud. And then I have a hacker group called the Hacker Group Guardians of Peace. And took credit for this in famous attempt to cheat to release the stolen data if their conditions are not met. And they stole the Sony pictures and frames that is not released. And their soul is a computer crime. And that is my application that have eight tips for you to protect ourselves because um, the computer crimes law is not um, protect us cannot protect us 100 percent so there have some tips um, be social media safety and secure your mobile device install the lastness operating system updates secure your wireless network protect your e-identity Call the right person for help. Use strong passwords. Uh, so thank you for my uh, tremendous explanation and invitation. Uh, to summarize, many crimes are unavoidable because the crime are changing in every day uh, because uh, every new system or new website has a uh, some new torsion or virus, so we can uh, prevent it 100%. And to set a strong password is also important. And never share your own devices uh, or information to your friends. Those behavior are silly. Probably much more news to improve your knowledge and uh, thinking about some situation about that. Thank you. Thank you very much, team number three. And I could see from your PowerPoint slide, each one of you have done a very good job um, sticking to the critical thinking patterns and helping to discover the answer of your own. Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, the next team, are you ready? OK. Uh, could you get ready over there using the wiki? Click to your wiki link, all right?
Yes, select the team, select the team. Yes, not yet. Today we have a presentation for you. And now let me introduce our group member and their direction first. Uh, my name is Sophie. My name is German. My name is Ivaldo.
political records, business-related information, or websites. Other term used for information privacy is data privacy. Information privacy is an important when it comes to information sharing. Personal information crimes have increased as the digital age has advanced. Information privacy is applied using various methods. For example, encryption, authentication, and data masking. Each method attempts to ascertain that only people with the authorized access get to the information. These protective measures prevent data mining and other unauthorized use of personal information. These bad practices are even illegal in many parts of the world. Information privacy is applicable to various data types, including internet, financial, and medical. Internet privacy relates to the privacy of data shared over the internet. Most websites display their privacy policy. That details the website's intended use of the collected information. Financial privacy relates to the privacy of financial information. Financial information is very sensitive. It could be used to commit frauds. Medical privacy relates to the privacy of medical records. Medical records are subject to strict laws. Security and authentication are enforced by laws. Thank you for watching. Our group member, he was absent, so we will skip this question one. But uh, our member, our group member, when he conclusion, he will supplement the question one, and and I will talk to the question two. How should we prevent information from leakage? This question is designed by ourselves and we have um, these applications. When we choose a readable platform, and number two is periodically change your password, and number three is to not take the invitation to disclose personal information. Number four is antivirus software. Our observations when we use the computer, it always will appear to this room of things. And, and our interpretation is, and as you can see, this platform, uh, there are a lot of countries that have been influenced by the information leakage and there are lots of uh, it, it means a bad internet in order to uh, leakage your information and number two is people always curious about the things that they want to know uh, you know what it means mm. and my conclusion is criminal is to use their Curiously, by click through rates which snake into your computers, steal personal information. This is our solution about question one. And let's Ariel pass my microphone to. So I'm going to talk about our. Second question, where and how the criminal get our information? By my observation, people feel safe to give their information in questionnaire. Uh, for example, just like they will send you an email and say that you will, you are selected to do some questionnaire and 
people always feel safe to give their information in this questionnaire. I don't know why. And also, people easily trust something from internet or telephone. Also, criminal always creatively track people. Uh, like, congratulations, you are you win a iPhone five, something like that. Also, the contract we sign usually contain condition that we give power to other people to sell our information. And because we never carefully watch all the details in the contract, so we always just give our information for those uh, tricky companies to sell our information. Okay, so what's the interpretation? I think there is a lot of trap in daily life, especially from internet and telephone. So we need to carefully and be and be suspicious to all those websites. And also don't easily trust other people, especially when they require your information. Information even uh, like they may be going to fake to be your uh, company partner and want some want to confirm your personal data, something like that. And my conclusion and my conclusion is criminal usually use our optimistic mind and careless to steal our information. Uh, yeah. And I think uh, the application in this case is claim carefully before we give out our information and also be aware to anything that requires you to give out something about yourself. Thank you, German. Personal things and 
As we know, it is not correct. No matter student use what software, they will not see privacy regulations. So there is no guarantee of their privacy. And criminals give students privacy to use the internet, so we should change and set multiple settings or password and use confidence code. And that's all our presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, this team. Let's give you a big hand. You did your presentations without the presence of an important member. All right, thank you. All right, now, um, next time when we come back on Tuesday, the first team to do the presentation is team one. Okay? And then today, we can accommodate one speech of the semester. Who is going to do it? Vinus or Karina? Vinus, okay? You have... Um, at most 15 minutes. Can you do it now? Yes, because the sign of time is today. Or Karina. Yes, yes. Thank you. So Karina is the speaker of today's for the speech of the semester. So you need to pick up the microphone. Thank you. Uh, you just go to log in to Moodle environment if you have something to share. Um, you can lock me out and you can lock yourself in. But you do not need to lock me out indeed because uh, you just need to go to your personal wiki, right? Please pick up the microphone. Yes. Um, privacy. Nowadays, there are so many people in the world now online. Nearly one third of human test is online today. Something we could have never thought possible 20 years ago. More than 2 billion people and counting. As a student of University of Macau, we use computer to add job codes and to, and to do assignment. Therefore, surf the internet is a very common thing. Surf the internet is a very common thing. It means that we are encounter danger is also a very common thing. For example, with the rapid development of electric computer and internet, more and more merchant this will circulate through the online tra translation. More and more people making friends on the internet. More and more people share their individual life thing on the internet. This means that we will encounter fraud, chatting, cyberbullying, web attack, hack, hacking, leaking out, stealing, and so on. I add this course. The first reason is that no more knowledge about information security and privacy is an important thing. The second reason is that I am open of the internet. I want to know more ways to protect myself. 
after reading all data and finish all reports from this course. And you have got a lot of knowledge about information security and privacy from week one reading to week ten reading. For this course, I have known the definition of information technology ethics in the information age and information comp competence hacking and cracking wireless network security and so on. For example, from read one reading, I have known the definition of information security and it can protect our personal privacy information. From week five reading, I have known the definition of encryption. We can use encryption this system to protect our email privacy, file, file privacy, voice privacy, chat privacy, traffic privacy, and so on. From which level reading, I have no more information from. Nowadays, information fraud is a very common thing on the internet. A lot of people have been missed information from. And from week 10 reading, I have no more knowledge about computer crimes. Someone illegal brush or steals a computer's privacy or individual privacy information is all belong to computer crimes. From this course, giving me the most unforgettable in prison is that an old guy dressed up as a 16 years old young boy to chase some young girl. First, the man talked with this uh, young girl and then the man dated this young girl. I can't believe that this young girl promised the individual invitation of the man. Um, this data from YouTube. In my opinion, surf the internet is convenient to us, but it means that surf the internet is also so dangerous. This course, many content and many conclusion is teach us how to protect our personal information, how to do we could not leak out our privacy information, and then what well, is at this in information age and which way we can do or can't and so on. All content is teach us how to protect ourselves on the internet. We had to remember that we should not use computer to share a lot of our important personal privacy information to strangers or in social media. It's so dangerous and we should not easier to trust to strangers. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dorina. Uh, she made a very sweet and beautiful speech, and thank you very much for your effort and uh, today. Well, uh, time is really up because now it's already past two fifteen. I'm looking forward to team number one's team base uh, presentation next Tuesday, and the speeches of the semester uh, according to the first come first uh, serve order. Um, depending on the time you sign up, we'll give you priority first, all right? So thank you very much for staying input and thank you Fleming for coming back to represent Team 6, yes. all right? Uh, and uh, we'll see you back here next week, the second last class Tuesday and the last class on uh, Friday, all right? So if you have not done this, go back to the website and complete the end of the semester course survey. All right, uh, it's already out there. Uh, this is an internal survey. We will do the official student feedback questionnaire next Friday in class when I will give you a specific 30, 30 minutes time to go to your student web link to do it, okay? All right, 